Hey guys, Nick here with Wazoo Survival Gear. Dustin's back there in the background tending to the fire. We're uh, about to eat lunch here, but I want to go over the lumberjack bracelet. So this is our uh, Wazoo Survival Gear lumberjack. It's uh, similar to our others. It's got the Firestorm buckle on it with a whistle and a fire starter, or a fire steel rather. And uh, you can equip them with ranger bands and put all kinds of accessories under the ranger bands and whatnot. But we're just going to cover the base bracelet today. And uh, the base lumberjack includes a wire saw that's all folded up on the inside. So we'll show you guys how to take this apart, how to get to the saw, and the best way to use it. So we'll get back to you in a little bit. Until then, enjoy. All right guys, here it goes. So mine, I've got right now, it's equipped with a ranger band on it. So all we're gonna do is just pop that guy off. You can see underneath, I've been uh, storing a striker blade. We used that for some earlier videos. Set that to the side, pull the ranger band off. And you're looking for the two melted ends down here. And what we're gonna do is just pop those loops free. So you wanna try and push the melted end through as you're pulling the loop over and then you can come to the back side and just kind of keep wiggling everything back and forth it'll eventually loosen up for you okay there we go we got the two ends and then all you do is just untie them and continue that on all the way we'll speed this up so it's not so mind-numbing for you to watch Got a little hitch on the end there, and you can just loosen that, pop it over the buckle, and it slides right off. So, see here, got about 10 feet or so of paracord here, melted in the middle. I've got a, a six and a half inch wrist for reference, so if you get 10 feet out of a lumberjack for a six and a half inch wrist, Obviously, if your wrist is bigger, you'll get more. Here's our Firestorm buckle with the ferro rod in the middle, whistle on the end. Keep that for when you need to start your fires. We've got our nameplate. All right, you can use this as a uh, signaling device as well. So if you flatten it out again, see on the back side here, there's a uh, mirrored surface and we can test those out later. Look for that in future videos. And then the heart of the lumberjack, our wire saw. So what we do, it's all sealed in the waterproof tube here, and you'll find the ends are split. So you just grab the two halves of the split end, and you can peel it apart. If you can get to the, get to the meat of the saw here, you should be able to just slide it right out. And you're left with a little over a 20 inch wire saw. So this guy here is uh, got two eyelets at the end, makes great attachment points for some paracord handles. I'll uh, save you the time of cutting into my paracord here, put some handles on this, and we'll be ready to go. All right guys, back here. I went ahead and cut all the uh, melted ends off of the paracord, so we've got all the center strands ready to access there. I gutted the whole section of the goldenrod color, and I went ahead and cut off two roughly one foot lengths of the uh, sheath. And now there's a lot of uses for this sheath because it's got 32 individual strands. You can check out our Facebook page. We've got an album uh, that uses the paracord sheath. So swing by, check it out. Something that a lot of people don't consider when they're adding up how many strands of paracord they have. So 
All we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, stick it through the eyelet, and tie a little double fisherman's to make a loop on either end. Uh, you can look up that knot online if you're unfamiliar with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get back to you. All right, so I went ahead, tied my two loops on my saw here, and this is just gonna be a temporary thing because ideally we wanna get this strung up in a bow saw form. You waste a lot more energy doing it by hand, and if you do too much this motion parallel, the saw will bite too much and get caught. So ideally you wanna do more of a, a straight cut anyway, and this will wear you out pretty quick. So we wanna get this on a bow saw. What you wanna look for for a bow saw is a uh, either young green branch or a shrub that's probably around three quarters of an inch in diameter. If you can find a dead one that's a lot thicker, it's still got some rigidity to it, um, and it's already got some sort of a curve in it, you could probably use that as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and take down this little tree right here. Uh, it's about the size I'm looking for, and I'll get back to you. You can see how how quick that was. You know, it's a decent size, maybe three quarter inch branch. Now that we got the uh, branch we need here, just want to get a feel for how springy it is. So just kind of try and soften it up a little bit, get an idea of how much you'll have to cut to string this saw between it. So for me, I'll probably try and cut somewhere right in here, and uh, that should give me enough spring and bow in it to do what I need it to do. All these other things you can just cut off. Go ahead and knock this out real quick. stand on both ends of it here. Right. Got my piece, clean off these little branches, go from there. Something that'll help you out. Also, it'll give the branch a little more flex. If you can uh, pre-bend it a little, to find a tree, just kind of bend it in the direction you want. Don't bend too much in one place, but this will help the whole branch curve a little more evenly instead of just snapping in one spot. Just kind of work it back and forth a little bit and uh, be less likely that your bow will break. Like I may have to get another stick here. Try and string it up and uh, see how it goes anyway. So I tried to keep stressing that one a little bit. Stressed it too much and it split. So, got a new one. I think I got it all flexed up. We'll move on to the next step. Gonna go to one of the ends. And depending which way you want it to bend, you wanna go in that same direction and make a notch and that'll hold the uh, the crimp off of the saw. So, let's see if I can show this a little awkward here. Let's see, put some weight on that. Just gently back and forth until you get a spot started. So you want to get it in more than the uh, thickness of the saw so that in the end when you bend it, your saw will sink in and your, grommet will, your crimp will catch there. And you still want enough meat left to hold that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other end see if we can turn this into a bow saw.
All right, finally, there we have it. Bow saw with some mud. And you can go ahead and remove the handles now if you want, but we'll go cut stuff with this just to prove it works. All right, a little down tree here, and uh, get some more wood for the fire out of this guy. And then we'll get here where you guys can see. light pressure when you're doing this and it'll conserve your energy. No scent sawing all the way through if you can break it, but that's probably going on an inch and a half. That's super hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this other piece, fast forward it, watch it or not. Thanks for your views, thanks for your support. This has been the Lumberjack video. And keep in mind, this is plenty big to build a sleeping platform or a super durable shelter. You could even build a raft out of these. So, Lumberjack, you might save your wazoo.